So there are three types of functions, an even function, an odd function, or neither. So an even function is defined as if f of x is equal to y, f of minus x is also equal to y. An example is f of x is equal to x square. f of minus x is the whole square of minus x, which is just x square. So now let f of x be any even function. And if we want to integrate f of x dx from minus a to a, we can write that as 2 times the integral of f of x dx from 0 to a. I'm, let me draw the example of x square. So this is a graph of x square and let's say this is minus a and this is a. So the area under this part is the same as the area under this part. So when we're taking the integral from minus a to a, we can just write it as 2 times the integral from 0 to a. Okay, so now let's look at this formula for an even function f of x. The integral from minus a to a f of x dx is the same as 2 times the integral from 0 to a f of x dx. Now let's look at the proof for this. We can write this integral as the integral from minus a to 0 f of x dx plus the integral from 0 to a f of x dx. So now let's substitute u is equal to minus x. That will du is equal to minus dx. So now we know f of u is the same as f of x as f of minus x is also the same as f of x because this is an even function. So now because we're substituting we have to change the limits as well. So when x is equal to minus a u will be a and when x is equal to 0 u will also be equal to 0. So now let's go ahead and substitute. This gives us the integral from a to 0 f of u times minus du. If we take the minus outside this becomes minus 1 times the integral from a to 0 of f of u du. So now because there's a minus sign here we can interchange the limits and remove the minus sign because that is a property of integration. This integral is exactly the same as the integral from 0 to a of f of x dx. This may seem wrong because we've taken u as minus x, but because this is definite integration, it doesn't matter which variable we take because ultimately this is going to be our answer that capital F is the antiderivative of this function. So now we've proved the integral from minus a to 0 f of x dx is the same as the integral from 0 to a f of x dx. Now if we resubstitute this integral as this integral, we get 2 times the integral from 0 to a f of x dx. So now let's look at the odd function. An odd function is defined as if f of x is equal to y, f of minus x must be equal to minus y. An example of that is f of x is equal to x. So now let's say we want to find the integral of f of x over minus a to a. The answer to this integral will be 0. So let me take the example of the function f of x is equal to x. This is minus a and this is a. The area under this part is the same as the area under this part. The only difference is that this is negative and this is positive because this is below the x-axis and this is above the x-axis. So this integral can be written as the integral from minus a to 0 f of x dx plus the integral from 0 to a f of x dx. Let's say this area is capital A. So this will become minus a plus a which is just 0. So we can use the property of an odd function that the integral from minus a to a of f of x dx is equal to 0. So using this property of an odd function, we can find some pretty interesting integrals that we won't be able to find otherwise. Let's look at the integral of cos x times sin inverse x dx from minus pi by 3 to pi by 3. 
cos x is an even function and sin inverse x is an odd function. The product of an even function and an odd function gives us another odd function. So let's say this is g of x. Since g of x is an odd function, the area under the graph from minus pi by 3 to 0 will be the same as the area from 0 to pi by 3 and since they are the opposite signs, when we add them, they become 0. So we can find such trigonometric integrals without even calculating the antiderivative of this part. Hey guys, if you've made it till here, you're a legend. Please click here and subscribe for more content and keep watching.